So it's been a while since I last made a Doctor Who video because, like most former fans, I just don't care anymore. I no longer have any investment in the show. It's over and done with. All we can really do now is just make fun of it and laugh at the degenerates that have taken control. When we all said that the canon destroying the timeless children was the final nail for the show, we meant it. Everything has a point of no return. And not only did Chibs the idiot and friends cross that line, they torched everything behind them. There's no one doing what they've done. And I hate to be a jerk and say I told you so, but I told you so, almost three years ago. The only thing I got wrong was that I completely underestimated just how damaging these degenerates were going to be. I figured, worst case scenario, that we might get lectured at for a few years and then maybe things would return to normal. Well, that was wishful thinking. For one thing, this is the modern BBC, so a return to former glory was never going to happen. There were rumors circulating about Chibs the Idiot's cannon destruction for weeks, but I largely put them off as rumors. I wasn't going to believe it until I actually saw it myself firsthand. Well, then we all saw it. It's now several months later, and nobody cares about Doctor Who anymore. At least New Who. Classic Who seems to have had a renaissance to fill the void left behind by this current abortion that dares to call itself Doctor Who in recent months. What's left of New Who, quote, fandom is quite sad. Here I'll invent the term Poser ideologue. Pretending that you support woke talking points without actually understanding them so you can fit in with your sad poser ideologue friends. They are quite vocal on that toxic waste dump known as Twitter. At least they provide us with plenty of entertainment. But these are the fans that the show and the BBC wanted, and these are the quote fans they can have. All the real fans have walked away. There was a glimmer of hope for fandom, however, with the recent lockdown tweet alongs that centered on New Who minus Dr. Nasty. For a few brief brief weeks, it seemed that fandom might be returning to normal outside of the current dumpster fire. We debated the episodes without focusing on wokeness, and it was almost fun being a Doctor Who fan again. That was until a certain writer decided to chain block everyone he disagrees with. And it should be noted that most of these people have never interacted with this writer. All we know is thousands of people were blocked from the tweet along, and this little act is what finally killed off Doctor Who fandom for good. At least as far as New Who goes. In short, the show was done, and now its fans had had enough. This writer also went out of his way to say that this was for the whole community, meaning that anyone that was blocked was obviously no longer a part of the community. Well, we aren't. Then he went on to praise the current regime. Well, no surprise there. Then, of course, this little nugget of news came out. Former Doctor Who showrunner changes regeneration rules. I guess RTD decided to join in on the party. I must say, I'm quite disappointed, man. Former Doctor Who showrunner Russell T. Davies has extended the Doctor's regeneration powers again, a more dramatic change than the Timeless Child. Well, since it's already destroyed, I guess you couldn't do much more to it at this point. Former Doctor Who showrunner Russell T. Davies has changed the show's regeneration rules again, and this time it's an even bigger change than the Timeless Child. Has everybody now just decided that canon means nothing? Probably. Current Doctor Who showrunner, Chibs the Idiot, had promised Doctor Who Season 12 would make drastic and lasting changes to the show's lore. And he was right, as the season finale revealed the Doctor is no Time Lord at all. Shut up, Chibs, you witless hack! A billion years ago, a Gallifreyan explorer named Tektoyun, also known as Cannon Destroyer, discovered an abandoned child on a distant world, near a mysterious boundary to another universe or dimension. I'm guessing this dimension is pretty woke. She adopted the young girl. Of course she did, because the BBC wouldn't allow white male. But sometime later, tragedy struck. Yeah, the show died. The child fell from a great height, a fall that should have killed her. Instead, she regenerated the first regeneration on Gallifrey. It's like it was written by a five-year-old. Called the Timeless Child, which Cannon Destroyer kills over and over again. This is what happens when a show is taken over by degenerates. This being became the base genetic code for the entire Time Lord race. Get lost, Chibs! Unlike the Time Lords, however, the Timeless Child has an unlimited number of regenerations. Too bad nobody let Matt Smith know. It's a massive retcon, rewriting, and destroying everything viewers knew about the Doctor's history and identity. And it was as much of a surprise for the Doctor as for long-term Doctor Who fans. Not so much a surprise, kind of, well, that's it. This is the worst case scenario. It was nice knowing you, Doctor Who. The Doctor's memory has been erased, kind of like what Doctor Who fans have done to New Who. But the Master discovered the truth while raiding the Matrix and delighted in taunting the Doctor with this revelation, to which she gave her trademark bitchy face. 
Now, former Doctor Who showrunner Russell T. Davies has retconned the Doctor's regenerative powers once again in a new animated short featuring David Tennant. Well, we'll always have the classic series, folks. The video stars Anna Hope reprising her role as Novice Haim, one of the cat nurses who appeared during the Tennant era. Novice Haim is dying of old age, expecting one last visit from the Doctor, who she appears to have studied. Get ready for a laugh, folks, or at least have your vomit bags ready. I have heard so many stories about him. Oh dear, wrong pronoun. Well, that's gonna cost you. Over the years, his hundreds of faces and forms, she observes, the men and women, of course, and animals. What the hell? So the doctor's been animals now too. Whatever, current year, yo. I guess this makes perfect sense, who have taken the name, and yet the one who comes for me is so familiar. This one is mine. Well, you are a cat. Maybe it's mating season. Novice Hames' comment would make no sense before Doctor Who season 12. Well, that's true. After all, there had been previously well-established limits to a Time Lord's ability to regenerate. Until the degenerates got a hold of the show, those limits have now been stripped away from the Doctor, meaning she has an unlimited number of lives. As I said, all we can do is laugh now. Nice save with the pronoun, by the way. Thus, when Haim says she knows hundreds of different doctors, there's no reason to assume she's wrong. In fact, it fits in with an amusing gag from Davies' The Sarah Jane Adventures, which is a kid-friendly Doctor Who spinoff. On that show, Matt Smith's Doctor claimed to have 507 regenerations. It was a joke, but these people don't understand humor. Novice Haim also suggests the Doctor can change her form as well as her face. She refers to men, women, and animals. Perhaps they're just trolling us. You just can't tell anymore. But too late. Nobody cares. It appears that the Doctor can actually change her species when she regenerates. This power is presumably not shared by the Time Lords, who have never been seen in exotic forms. Thus, Davies is implicitly suggesting the Doctor's regenerative ability outstrips the Time Lords in every possible way. It's safe to assume that there's still a limit to the Doctor's regenerative ability, though she most likely has to stick to humanoid, warm-bodied species and will also retain those two hearts. Problem, seeing as the current incarnation seems to have no heart, empathy, ability to act, and so forth. The Chibs era has expanded Doctor Who's mythology in unexpected ways. Not really. We should have seen this coming. Chibs the Idiot has retconned the Doctor's regenerative abilities, and he's introduced Jodie Whittaker as the first female Doctor, and Joe Martin as the first black Doctor. The show should be called Doctor Lecture Session, because it sure as hell isn't Doctor Who anymore. Amusingly though, Russell T. Davies has gone one step further, revealing the Doctor doesn't even have to look like a human. It almost feels like a competition to come up with the most regenerative canon, or canon destruction, but nobody cares. And Chibnall's Doctor Who Season 13 may offer the next one. It probably will. Too bad, nobody will be watching. Jesus, RTD, you're better than this. But whatever, Doctor Who is dead. And that's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Twitter. And as always, everyone, thanks for watching, and have a great day.